last, we are happy to talk with you about uh, upcoming commercial uh, generally available JAMA software and CATIA magic integration. This will align uh, requirements management solution and system architecture in SysML. As you can see here, this integration really amazing uh, coming in uh, version 2024, refresh one, which is at the end of the year. So now let's go deeper inside of it, uh, what capabilities we will provide uh, and uh, we'll show the demonstration uh, how it will look like. Um, so first of all, uh, what a major highlights so uh, it's based on the best uh, integration framework we have and to use for requirements management is data hub uh, and uh, this is uh, existing uh, capabilities plus improved uh, performance and usability similar user experience for all integrations so if everything uh, all that you know uh, many years experience from doors integration now we are using in the jama integration uh, but uh, for sure you know like uh, all the problems uh, which we had in past there are less lessons and now we are solving them other connectors available uh, as ibm doors classic ibm's doors next generation or slc version 2 and a couple of more so uh, what uh, it, this integration will support uh, so support schema map manager so you can uh, it actually uh, possible and as with all other integrations update the mapping especially because JAMA has multiple uh, type of data and also we have multiple types of data as custom requirements example then we will have connector specific default mapping shipped with each connector it's like the same with JAMA ability to specify new mapping schemas to be used by default a different mapping scenarios like a group individual or based on a attribute values and those are important because we see those advanced scenarios and our users ap apply applying uh, the solutions especially this very popular solution with JAMA which uh, is already evaluated by a few clients even it is in the pre-technical preview version for now and then ability to improve import and export mapping schemas for users across the team because if you create it in your uh, for your needs it's likely big company needs right and multiple people can synchronize them and then links uh, summary tool to manage uh, existing or analyze missing synchronization links so you want also synchronization as change uh, uh, and then a copy sync tool to recover lost synchronization uh, links uh, so also recovering uh, main use case is that we connect to external data source JAMA it can be on premise or on cloud uh, and then we synchronize requirements based on system engineering process it could be that we import requirements from JAMA and keep synchronization or export from Cameo and uh, then based on requirement changes we resynchronize uh, check for changes and initi initiate data synchronization uh, so why we actually decided to implement this connector? First of all, it is a leading solution for requirements management and traceability across the whole development process. Uh, doors uh, were such kind of product in the past and still is, but uh, JAMA is taking market and we want to be able to support our users which are growing in the this area. Uh, it, this uh, ensures real-time collaboration and integration, uh, enables risk management and compliance, compliance frameworks and templates aligned to industry-specific standards are available in JAMA. Uh, then we have guidance based on industry-specific uh, uh, practices, uh, helping reducing errors and improving quality of requirements uh, in the JAMA and the ability to support different uh, industries. and. Uh, Last but not least, it was requested by uh, tens of tens of clients, uh, and uh, that's uh, what we want to see. Now, uh, talking about uh, connector highlights, so authentication, as you can see here, we use standard data hub authentication. Again, uh, JAMA could be, uh, this is like 2.0 authentication protocol. JAMA could be on premises or on cloud. So depending on that, it could be different uh, popular identification capabilities, which we both support. Uh, 
Then also we provide uh, ability to choose which project requirements we are synchronizing. So you can select this project which uh, your requirements are going to see and synchronize. Um, then you are able to see the tree in data hub. You see a JAMA tree with the data type specific for this specific uh, template, which was selected for the uh, project, right? Uh, not all the data types are visible and not all the data types are available in all the templates based on the market uh, uh, standards, right? Uh, and you can see the same tree here in data hub and same tree in uh, JAMA tool. Uh, then uh, synchronization synchronization is bi-directional you can limit to one direction based on the system engineering process but by default uh, uh, but the capability allows you to do bi-directional uh, single element level as you can see here you can select which element which direction to synchronize again based on the process you might limit that synchronization one way for a specific set of requirements uh, then we support also we spend time to understand and support different types uh, of JAMA objects as you can see here based on different industries based on different uh, tasks there is different types available like uh, requirements for automotive uh, then also we have uh, code and we have uh, uh, some other types which we want to treat in proper way then ability to synchronize diagrams and as uh, uh, we have here, we see the diagram as an image, so we synchronize that as an image to JAMA. Also, we can take a diagram as an image from JAMA because JAMA has a diagram drawing tool which we can embed into SysML as part of requirement. As you can see here, this is what we see here embedded in SysML requirement. And then th this drawing of the diagram from JAMA and then this JAM this requirement diagram image from SysML is actually pushed back to the JAMA as the SysML diagram and non-editable. And uh, last not least, so we are using this as mentioned, uh, our framework, which is uh, almost exclusively used for requirement synchronization and uh, we are applying the best uh, level of the expertise and team uh, uh, to support this new capability for JAMA software synchronization. Now let's go to the demonstration and we'll go through the steps uh, synchronizing requirements uh, diagrams and requirements. So here we will go to the Data Hub Explorer, as you can see, this is the standard capability. And we get the Data Hub uh, Explorer integration framework. And here we have connector for the JAMA. Now we can select a type of authentication, link to the JAMA server and uh, connect. Now we are able to choose which uh, project to establish uh, synchronization with so we select that project uh, and we can actually choose another one but we can't work in multiple ones at once <coughs> so the, now based on that and selected uh, schemas for that project data schemas we can see what are elements available and choose what to synchronize and we are demonstrating a couple of scenarios as we discussed so now we are dragging the diagram uh, to the uh, Katia Magic uh, to establishing the mapping to be able to see that uh, in Katia Magic. So this diagram is actually created in JAMA. It is as a drawing of the diagram and we want to incorporate that as part of the system requirements uh, synchronized from JAMA. So we are establishing synchronization as you can see here and uh, property mapping as you can see here and then uh, we are synchronizing. Desynchronized uh, everything, everything went uh, through, and now we have those requirements in SysML. We can visualize them in the diagram, and also we will see the image of the diagram from the Java visible in SysML. Let's create the SysML diagram uh, for requirements and drag those requirements. <coughs> Here you go. And you can see this image of the diagram is included in SysML requirement. Uh, 
so now what we will do we are going to actually show all related requirements uh, to visualize them as you can see here relations were mapped to derive requirement relations on import you can actually choose any other relation like or maybe refine or so based on the best uh, uh, application case uh, in your methodology of the system engineering model based system engineering derive uh, relation might be good for the traceability between different abstraction levels of requirement but composition would be in the same requirements uh, specification as in this case might be even better uh, composition uh, not composition but containment relation now what we do here we are actually synchronizing back uh, uh, requirements and uh, we will map the diagram actually from CSML to the object inside of the JAMA in order to see it as an image. So this is ability to see actually cameo images, CATIA magic images, diagrams inside of the JAMA without need to open the CATIA magic. Uh, but they are static images only, so you can't modify them. They are just images, but you can actually synchronize them and uh, resynchronize based on the changes together with data set based on this mapping, which you can see here. This is uh, all those capabilities uh, which you see a little bit different. Some of them, they are based on our feedback from the clients because this integration was already available in technology preview for some time from 2024 actually. And people try that. And here you can see now in JAMA, we see those uh, uh, diagrams uh, and uh, as the uh, images and requirements. And you see here in this requirement object, uh, it's in this object related to requirement, there is that image of the CSML diagram. Here we see another set of requirements. Now we are synchronizing those requirements. Uh, and here you see we are updating mapping. Uh, you can save that mapping as default because you know if you are kind of uh, doing this for the first time then you want to see what the mapping will be there but once you are done with the mapping you don't want to update it every time you are doing new synchronization and uh, this mapping is actually synchronized uh, and saved and a bit, uh, you can also uh, transfer it to other uh, team members Again, we see here synchronized data, and now we can visualize this data. You see there is synchronization scope uh, marked by S, the package. So this synchronization scope is pretty much uh, representing that uh, those that level is synchronized. So you can uh, always check in the future, is there any changes in that level? You can uh, update in both ways. As you can see here, we can update from uh, Katia Magic site, create changes and new requirements and remove something. We can do that from JAMA site, uh, but uh, it's always good to decide you know, where is the authoritative source of truth in order not to introduce bidirectional uh, changes and uh, decisions later on, or even worse, uh, conflicts later of changes of the same requirement. So here we see new requirement uh, and updated requirement. We can see what is actually specifically changed in that requirement. If you select it, you can see specific properties here, which changed. There's a little bit hidden here that properties uh, jumping uh, toolbar. And then because we are doing changes from Katia Magic site, we are selecting those changes and uh, updating to JAM. We are choosing new data types for the element types which were not synchronized in the past. So if you introduce new element types and they were not synchronized to JAMA, we can choose this dialog. And this dialog jumps actually and here's property mapping which allows us to resynchronize those element those properties and element types during synchronization.
So now let's check the changes uh, in Java. We see new requirements are available. And that pretty much ends our demo demonstrating two scenarios and uh, great new capability for the Java synchronization.